one minute past eight p.m. at Fotokol in the far north region of Cameroon. It is one minute past eight p.m. here in Douala. We begin the prime time news with the headlines. The effort of the Special Council Support Fund, FECOM, in accompanying local municipalities have been acknowledged. Being at the service of local collectivities since 20, 2008, the institution received an award today in Yawundi. Highlights of the ceremony will be brought to us in the course of this newscast. The government of Cameroon dialogues with lawyers to handle their grievances before the planned strike built for September 16, 2019. Meeting with men and women of uh, the law, the minister delegate in the Ministry of Justice promised government's willingness to solve uh, the problems raised by lawyers. Outcome of the meeting will be yours in the news. Once beaten, twice shy, so goes an English adage as the Minister of Water and Energy takes steps to ensure constant electricity supply. This was the object of his visit today at the Puma Hydroelectric Dam, as Nder Vanessa Shuyong will be telling us alongside other stories. Do not go away. We will be right back for a full newscast right ahead. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Prime Time News here on DBS. Today is the 5th of September 2019, and my name is Maange Venasius. We begin the news in education. Why schools are overcrowded and effectively ongoing in many parts of the country, it is still a ghost atmosphere in others. The Nkolo Budu Government Primary School, it is a locality in the center region, is one of those where the school campus is completely abandoned and deserted. Cynthia Nguemo in the following report takes us through the school and its environment. These grass-infested buildings surrounded by forest and bushes is unbelievably a school compound. It is the Nkolo Budu 2 primary school in the Ayo subdivision center region of Cameroon. A primary school that once hosted pupils of the village for several years now more or less looks like a cemetery abandoned to itself. In this time of school resumption, when most schools in the country are jam-packed with pupils and teachers, this one is totally void and inaccessible as if to say school has never existed here. The interior demonstrates the same neglect with textbooks, stamps, and even report cards abandoned in the classrooms. Other classes practically look like an abandoned construction site. From information on the chalkboard, this building lastly united pupils and teachers in May 2019, which is around the end of the last academic year. Why the Nkolo Budu government primary school is in this abandoned state is not obvious, but what is clearly visible is that the 2019-2020 academic year seems to be lost and wasted for this school. But nevertheless, life continues in Nkulubudu, where there is always enough to eat and drink. While other pupils and students are studying under trees in some other localities, there we have structures that have been abandoned. We hope that the powers that be take urgent measures. We talk about education and while the importance of education being preached across the globe, the re-education center for impaired children continuously multiply her efforts in the education of hearing and speech impaired children. How challenging is the educational world in this sector? What are the teaching techniques and what are the rules of the parents of these uh, pupils? Is uh, the questions our reporter Williams Amos sought to find out from the staff of this re-education center here in Douala and compiled the following report. At the mention or site of the sign language, what comes to mind is the hearing and speech impairment, a disability which can affect anyone children or adults. The re-education center for impaired children in the Douala 2 municipality is always set to accommodate these hearing and speech impaired children from different backgrounds with special needs, though a challenging assignment. The difficult thing now is to take care of them because some of them are aggressive. So the difficulty now is their behavior because they are not used to with me. They are still, they, it's their first time to meet me, so they, they are still afraid of me. They don't obey what I ask them to do. So for the moment, I'm still, we are still trying to know each other. 
educating these children with special and individual needs goes far beyond the normal subjects and teaching methods in regular schools to the use of images, signs, actions and other specific techniques per the ability or inability of each child. I have sign like stand. When I do it, I also stand. When I say sit, I also sit. So that you make them to understand what I'm asking them to go and do. Now when I take them to the toilet, from there, I will take a toilet myself and make peace so that I will go down and they will understand what I'm asking them to do. So it's little by little. Teaching techniques which must not end in the classroom. Thus, the need for parents and teachers to work hand in gloves. I'm pleading the parents to please come and meet the teacher so that when, when I give homework, I have to explain them how they can cope in the house with the children to explain the homework to them. They should not be the ones to do their homework because most of them are writing for the children and it's not good because it's not helping the child. So they have to come and meet the teacher so that the teacher will show the method to use at home to help these children. The parents should like the most of, even more than the others because they need it so that they should be calm. Keeping children with impairments at home causes more harm than good while education will help them to be well adjusted and independent for better integration into the society. We hope that the parents will take heed to that advice and it's completely a different world for those who are strange to sign languages. Now we continue still in education. Barely a week into the school year 2019-2020 academic year, a reporter and Vanessa Shuyong visited some schools to find out what security measures have been put in place to ensure a huge free academic year. In the following report, she tells us that drastic disciplinary measures have been taken in some schools, especially in government Balingua High School, they do. This is what she brought back. Ensuring an effective back to school is one thing and a huge free academic year is another. Schools being one of the institutions to harbor drug consumption and white weapons is not a time to mislead disciplinary measures. Authorities of some government schools and colleges have ways to enforce discipline that are already functional. A problem of discipline. After that problem, we sat down and reinforced the security. We have blocked off the hole that the student dock around the fence. We have carried the fence up. We have recruited some uh, GROBRA to help us in discipline. Here is to enter classrooms uh, when we want to check what the students have in their bags. And um, when we open those bags, we check whether there is a telephone, but because the telephone is forbidden in a, in a classroom, if uh, they have drugs and so on. The government Balingua High School day, though, after the scandal of March 2019, now has a new look, a change of uniforms, low cuts for all, and cleanliness in the inside out. Uh, because all the schools around are wearing the same uniform, a student from a different school could jump and enter the school and do something without us knowing who has done it. Now, if you are not our student, you cannot enter. We decided with the parents, we held a meeting and decided to change the uniform. We went to SICAM and we made a command. During the governor's visit on September 2nd to launch the academic year in Douala, he clearly stated that severe sanctions would be for students who go against the school rules and regulations. The governor of the Litoral region who came yesterday, who launched the school academic year in my school, he was clear that all those that will be caught will be dismissed and will be taken to no other school in his region. Uh, it is clear discipline must reign. Success can only be achieved through discipline, says the principal of Deido. 
teachers alone cannot accomplish the task if parents do not play the primary role. An appeal to parents that they should help us educate these children. They have two, three at home. They are not able of doing it when we have thousands in schools. Please, parents, help us to help you by checking your children at home before sending them to us. No to violence in school premises, no to the consumption of drugs, just name but these, are among other crucial measures developed by some schools to ensure a calm and serene environment for studies. And the primordial role of parents remain outstanding in the education of our children. We talk something new, something different in the news. The Minister Delegate at the Ministry of Justice, Jean de Dieu Momo, has held a meeting with lawyers to seek solutions to grievances that have pushed these lawyers to plan for a strike come September 16. Different parties in attendance during the meetings promised to solve this, to look for solutions to the problem at their different levels. Philippe Sauté has that report. It was a measure meant to defuse a planned strike by lawyers scheduled to begin September 16, a unanimous decision taken following several unresolved grievances put forth by the lawyers, grievances which they consider sufficiently serious that have been apparently ignored. They will want that persons brought up for trial be tried in the language they best understand. They are crusading against the obtention of evidence through torture, prolonged illegal detention, illegally transforming judicial custody into administrative custody, abusively keeping accused persons under detention in spite of earlier decisions granting them freedom, refusal to answer certain requests from lawyers and even refusing to acknowledge receipt of such correspondences. These and other grievances appear to have pushed the lawyers to the wall and they could no longer support their tolerance zero. And so their meeting with the minister delegate in the Ministry of Justice, also attended by the Secretary of State for Penitentiary Administration, representatives from the Secretariat of State for National Gendarmerie, the General Delegation for National Security, was aimed at looking for ways to solving these demands and to overturn the planned strike. The different representatives gave the green light to a lasting solution, while Minister Delegate Jean Didier Momo promised swift instructions to the competent uh, court jurisdictions to render the task of lawyers easy in treating their case files. Meanwhile, the lawyers are yet to make an official statement as to whether the strike action has been called off or not. We remain in Yawundi. A solemn ceremony to hand the International Standard Organization Certificate to the Special Council Fund for Mutual Assistance, FECOM, has taken place this Thursday at the institution's head office in Yawundi. The certificate was handed to the Director General of FECOM by the General Administrator of the Douala branch of the audit company, Bureau Veritas. A Yawundi-based correspondent, Afese Apong, has the details of that story from Yawundi. The Special Council Support Fund for Mutual Assistance, FICOM, has for many years now been accompanying local councils in the development and amelioration of the living conditions of their local populations through the financing of intercommunal projects. With the financial support of the German Corporation, FICOM has since 2008 engaged in the quality approach in order to standardize its methods and tools to better satisfy its customers in accordance with the international reference system. The institution has since then been striving towards providing quality services to its customers and it is for this reason that a ceremony was organized at the institution's headquarters in Mimboman, Yaoundi to recognize the strides made by FICOM in providing quality services. A certificate was handed to the Director General of FICOM by the General Administrator of the Douala branch of an audit company, Bureau Veritas, Philip Drain. The award we receive today is an award making by the International Standard Organization. And uh, that uh, award is uh, to recognize how FECOM is working. And uh, it is not when it's giving uh, the hand, 
because when it's given you have to know that uh, every year you will have an audit to see if you maintain in your way of working the international standard so uh, we it is a uh, for encouraging uh, to what we are doing and we have to maintain that level of standard of working and uh, to reach every time our results. With the International Standard Organization 9001 version 2015, FACOM has witnessed a progressive performance and a diversification of products offered to its customers. After receiving the award, the Director General of FACOM, Philip Camille Aqua, revealed that their main goal is to maintain the standards and strive towards excellence. If you are just joining us, you are watching the live prime time news here on DBS at television. It is 17 minutes past 8 p.m. The Professor Maurice Kamto is due to reappear before the Yaounde Military Tribunal tomorrow, September 6th, alongside some of his party militants to, act, to, to, to answer charges of treason, inciting violence, and disruption of public order. Maurice Kamto has requested that the hearing be made public for national and international media, as Jalo Boba tells us in this report. Professor Maurice Kamto and his supporters currently in detention at the Kondenge Central Prison in the nation's political capital, Yaounde, were arrested by the forces of law and order following demonstration rallies carried out in some Cameroon major towns of Yaounde, Douala, Bafusam and abroad. Since January 28, 2019, the president of the Movement for the Renaissance of Cameroon, who came second during the October 2018 presidential election in Cameroon, has been contesting the election results that went in favor of the incumbent president, Paul Beer. Professor Maurice Kamto and some of the militants of his party have been tried by the Yaounde military court. They are being accused of charges of treason, inciting violence, and disruption of public order. His court case has been adjourned several times. The next hearing has been scheduled to take place on Friday, September 6. The question on many lips within his party's circle and public gatherings is that will he be found guilty or innocent? This time around, if found guilty, he risks life jail for the law does not take treason cases lightly. Gaston Elundu Esomba, Minister of Water and Energy, has paid a working visit today to the Puma Hydroelectric Dam to take measures to ensure constant electricity supply in the days ahead nationwide. The Vanessa has details of that story in this report. The Cameroonian Minister of Water and Energy, Gaston Elundu Esumba, was on the field this September 5th in Puma, division of the Sanaga Maritime, to evaluate the problem faced by the Songlulu hydroelectric power plant in supplying energy to the major cities and localities surrounding the hydroelectric dam. During his exchange with the authorities of the division, such as the Director General of Hydromine, the mayor of the Puma municipality, Soman Francois, lasting solutions to the problems were devised. The minister reassured the population that his presence is to see how they can reinforce the distribution, security, and quality of electricity supply to the population. He later had a closed-door discussion with the village chiefs. The Minister of Water and Energy was accompanied by the Governor of the Central Region, Nasiri Paul Beer. The recent Prime Ministerial Decree signed at the beginning of this month of September to exonerate business investors from paying taxes in the crisis regions of the Northwest, Southwest and the Far North regions have been received by some Cameroonian businessmen with mixed feeling. A reporter, Wamba Tanzi Mirabel, takes a look on this controversy in this report. In order to rejuvenate the economy of Cameroon in the Northwest, the Southwest and the Far North regions of Cameroon, which has been shattered by the ongoing Anglophone crisis and Boko Haram attacks, the Prime Minister and Head of Government, Joseph Diongute, has signed a tax-free business policy this September 2019 a policy aimed at encouraging Cameroonian entrepreneurs to invest in these three regions in order to revive and rebuild their economy. 
The decision has, however, been received with a mixed feelings by some business persons in the country. According to this farmer, he says, it's good news for great investors who in the past shied away because of Cameroon's bottleneck tax policy. He added that since he is involved in extensive agriculture, he can push through in any of these regions because he is confident governments will put up measures to secure his investment. To this other entrepreneur, he says government efforts at this point is great, but in hot spots like the three crisis regions, feasibility study must be carried out before daring to invest. Others just simply believe it's a stringent measures and effort government want to apply to bring an end to the ongoing crisis and enforce national unity. However, diehard business persons are still clinging on to the beliefs and business concept that high profits always work hand in glove with high risks and are ready to invest anywhere in as much as their taxes are reduced. The management and staff of DBS Television had the privilege this week to receive uh, the Lamedo of Tibati in Jerem Division of uh, the Adamawa region who made a stopover on the, DB on the DBS TV premises on his way back home from Saudi Arabia. During the visit, the Lamedo prayed for peace to reign in Cameroon in general and in DBS in particular. Jalobuba captured highlight of that visit and now reports. <laughs> The premise of the Dan Broadcasting System, DBS TV, has been honored by the Lamido of Tibati, His Majesty Hamidou Bello. He was received upon arrival by the staff of DBS who were anxiously waiting. He, in all majesty, shook hands with his host irrespective of sex. He used the opportunity and visited some services to have first-hand appraisal starting with the editing room, reception hall, amongst others. The visit was then followed with a brief session during which he was formally welcomed by the general coordinator of DBS TV on behalf of the founder of the station, Al Haji Baba Amadou Danpullo. In response, the Lamido started by thanking the Almighty Allah who has enabled him, performed a very successful Hajj, and he redefines the position of Hajj in Islam. He went ahead to appreciate Al Haji Amadou Baba Danpullo for all he is doing to satisfy Cameroonians of all walks of life, but nonetheless express his worries seeing that Dampullo's businesses are today threatened. The director of communication for Nextel, Musa Husseini, thanked Lamido for the visit and Al Haji Danjuma, littoral regional coordinator for Sodelco, added his voice in thanking the Lamido for all his support. A symbolic gift was then handed to the August guest by the pioneer DBS general manager, Nyo Moses. The Lamido then prayed for all and snapshots ended the visit, which has now gone into DBS archives as the first Lamido to pay a visit to the station on his way home from Hash. At 25 minutes past 8 p.m., it is here that we draw the curtains for this edition of the Primetime News. Do not go away. The next newscast will be coming up at 9 p.m. in the French language with Luke Serge Didier Nang. I'll be back again tomorrow at 8 p.m. for the last edition of the week. Keep watching programs here on DBS Television. Until we meet again tomorrow, have a blessed evening. Good night.